All right, welcome. Today we're doing a startup. I already uh, uploaded the machine, everything, got that guy all up here running stuff. Oh, turn my camera on. There you go. Make life a little bit better. Let's see here. See if that's any better there. Yes, it is. All right, cool. All right, so we're uh, going to start up. So let's go ahead and run our MF scan like we usually would on here. Let's see if I already have something for startup here. I do. Oh, a lot of stuff in there, too. All right, so let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and run our MF scan like real quick. We'll run it at that IP address. We'll see what that comes back with, and it may not actually be up yet. Oh, or I should probably actually get into my VPN, huh? Probably should get in my VPN here and actually connect to something, huh? All right, now let's go ahead and try to run that again. All right, we got 22, 21, 80. As soon as I see 21, I always like to do a quick port scan on it, or a uh, default scan, check the version, especially with uh, Cache of the Flag style events. That's always a good thing to do. And it looks like we're using anonymous login is enabled. So let's say we go ahead and anonymous login to that. So we'll go ahead and uh, FTP into there. Whoopsie daisy. There we go. Type in anonymous, no password, and now we're in. Cool. So we got quite a few things in here, which I'm pretty sure I already have up here. So I'm not going to get all those things again, but you just type in get, G-E-T, and then whatever you want to get. Uh, FTP is a directory also, so we can CD in the FTP directory. And in the beginning, nothing's going to be in here and nothing is in there. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and check out port 80, see if we see anything in there. I'm going to leave the SP connection open for now. Let's see if we find anything in port 80. No spice here. Okay. Uh, when we can update this, so nothing really in here of any importance that we can see right now. So let's try to do a uh, third search on there, a GoBuster, DirBuster, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to do a Python 3. Go back to dirt search py, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a recursive lookup. As you can see down here with that R, tech R is recursive, so as it finds something, it's going to keep going through that those different areas. You can put it out to the end and go through those different areas and try pretty much the whole thing again. So we do have files open here, so we can go there. And it looks like the same files that we found within that FTP server there. So what that tells me, if we can get to files on the web, that means that we could most likely open up a like a web terminal with a web PHP. All right, so I should be able to, just so you guys can see how I did all this, should be able to go to web uh, or pen test monkey. Um, I think I did web PHP terminal, I think I told you. PHP reverse shell, pen test monkey. And we should be able to get a uh, PHP reverse shell. I'll show you what it looks like up here. Cat web PHP. So it's pretty big. Or did I just do my reverse shell that I usually use? No, I did not. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely the terminal reverse shell that I used there. And it doesn't look like it's in here. That's the actual, that one. The actual reverse shell. This was also the actual reverse shell. So we're looking for a web shell. There we go, web shell. And this, like, right here is a, nope, that's still a reverse shell, it looks like. Because you shouldn't have to put in your IP address, not try to talk back to you, or anything like that. So let me go ahead, I'm going to keep trying to find that web PHP. Web PHP. Web PHP uh, terminal. Terminal emulator. That looks good. Let me switch this to English. I cannot read that. I don't know if you can. Uh, we got a PHP terminal emulator. What if we could do use that like right there? So I don't remember exactly where I found that guy from. Let's see here. PHP. It's kind of weird. Or whatever that one is. But 
I can try find. I think I did it on my regular machine here. So let me go back to him and see if I can find where I actually got that web PHP from. So you guys can see uh, right where I got it from at. So I was back on my regular machine here. You probably won't be able to see anything. That one has some type of password thing in there. Terminal like PHP shell. This might be it. JSP.php. Let's see what the, how, how this guy looks. You blink or delete if you don't want password protection. See, I want to actually create that web shell. So I'm trying to figure out right where I found that at to actually create that web shell. Because uh, we should be able to upload something in there, get into that web shell, and then go from there because if we can see that FTP file then we're golden you know and I did find right where I found it at so let me go ahead and uh, get back over to here to, you know simple PHP web shell okay so I found it with art Wyom okay on github artium and this is it like right here so if I just go to index.php this is why I copied, pasted it into my own thing, and went from there. I guess I could have just looked at the actual file itself for more than a second, and it should actually say it on here. Yep, there you go. So that's like where I found it at. And what we can do with this is we can actually upload this. So as long as I'm in the same directory, which let me make sure I'm going to exit up here, I am. Okay. So we're going to FTP back to that guy, anonymous. We're going to with that FTP guy again. CD back into FTP. So like, there's nothing in there right, right now. We can upload our web.php into there. And that is an invalid command. Oh, is it put web.php? Might be put. There we go. So we put that web.php in there. Now if I do an ls tech la, we can see that web.php is inside there. All right, so we download that web.php like real quick. Um, nothing to it, just really copy and paste. Make sure you're in the same directory as what your FTP, wherever you FTP to that. And we're going to go ahead and try to put that in there now. Okay. So we went to our files, FTP, and we should be able to see WebPHP in there now. Now if we click on that, we can now execute commands. So we can execute things like ls -tac la or pwd. All right. So we can execute commands in here, and it's working. So that's good. So can we do like cd backpack, backpack? I don't know what permissions we have yet. Etsy shadow. Can we do anything like that? Nope. Okay. What about Etsy password? I'm kind of treating this almost like I wonder if I could just do a CD slash Etsy password. It's kind of treat that like a LFI, like right there. We're not seeing anything there, so we may not have the rights to get into Etsy. I wonder if we can CD a temp. Um, last LA. All right. So we don't seem to be able to get out of here. This area, like right here. Um, we do something like that. I don't know if that's even an actual valid command, but we don't seem to be able to do anything else from here. But then I decided, okay, well, maybe they have Python running because we could create a reverse shell of Python, and they do. All right, so I went to my sweet scripts thing that I have all saved and everything. I went to my scripts, and I used my Python reverse shell script. So I used my reverse Python script. Uh, I used one. On this one, so if I cat that, cat my reverse uh, point that one script here. Just do an export host to myself. My changes IP address. Got to figure out what your IP address is. What port I want to export it to. Obviously, I have to create a listener, and we're going to go from there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. And you can find this on the web also. Not very hard to find. Just reverse shell Python. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do an IF config. And mine is 1091241 now. It was 69, but changed to 241 for some reason. So let me go ahead and nano that file. Nano my rev python1.txt. And I'm going to change this to dot .241. Yes, and it's on port 4242. So if I start a netcat listener on port 4242, I should be able to uh, run this guy like right here. And should technically be able to get back to myself, which would like give me obviously a much better prompt than what I am over here. And we're gonna execute him. He's hanging like a little bit, and there we are. So who am I? 
cab www data. We can also do our cat our full shell because we know that Python's running. There we go. All right, and we're in here now like this. So that's good. We've got this far right. So we got our test log here, our FTP import.jpg, and our notice.txt. So we could, we already got all those. So we could just come over here to our terminal and look at all of them. Over, now that we're in here, we can do a cat test log. And that just says test. Okay, let's do our cat to notice that text. Um, I didn't think that this was something. I thought that Maya might have been a username of some sort. So I did try to use that for port 22 and use Hydra. That did not work for me. Um, I'm sure if, uh, I don't know if Maya is actually a user or not. Let's try cat. Can we cat Etsy password? Let's see if Maya is a user. Okay, so it doesn't look like she actually is a user here. For cat Etsy password, we do have a Letty here. So we do have a Letty. So let's try CD and slash home. And let's see if we, yep, sure enough, do have a Letty. Let's try CD into him. And permission is denied. All right. We can't do a sudo tack L that I know of. Probably going to ask for a password. Yep, we don't know his password. We just created a reverse shell back into ourselves. So we don't know what his password is. So I wonder if we can do like an SUID lookup. So let's go ahead and cat SUID lookup. Let's see what this guy's allowed to run. Mount, unmount, ping six. We can change users. We can ping. We're just gonna let that guy run for like a minute. This guy's still run over here. We probably stop him. He's just beating the machine up. And Mav's beating the machine up. We'll probably stop him too. We're just gonna let that guy run for a minute and see uh, if we get anything with that. Or if that goes anywhere for us. Still got stuff coming through. But this at like right here, this one had me very confused. And I did do a GTFO bids for at, but uh was not able to run it on here. So, but yeah, that would have me like, oh, that must be, you know, that's a weird one. And I don't know why that's there. Don't understand it, but that one was a weird one. So we can't seem to really do much. But let's go ahead and CD an attempt, and let's upload our lid piece, right? So I can CD into my awesome scripts or privilege escalation awesome scripts, okay? And then CD into lid piece. From there, I'm going to do my uh, ls tech la, make sure I'm in the right directory. I am, and I'm going to start a Python web server. So I'm going to say Python. Tag M, simple HTTP server. We're going to put that port 80. I'll go ahead and sudo this. Cali. And there we are. So now if I go to my IP address, which if I look at it again, was 10.9.1.2.41, I should see everything inside this folder like right here. So if I go to that IP address now, and as you can see, I do. I see images, libp.sh. Okay, so I see everything that was in that folder. What I could do from here is I could do a wget, as far as I know, and I can, or else it would say need to install wget. So I do a wget, http, my IP address, slash limps.sh. Now notice I changed the temp folder. Okay, usually you want, usually I do this from the home folder. Um, since I can't get into a home folder, I had to do it in a temp folder. And there we are. If we look over here, yep, sure enough, you set it off. If I do an ls tech la, I should have libp.sh in here. Right now, it's only readable and writable, so let's change mode. Let's do 777. We could just do a plus X, whatever, for libp.sh. And I do an ls tech la again. And we have it, so we can execute it. Let's go ahead and execute that libp. And there it goes. All right, so let's do it as thing now. Let's go through. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this side over here, because... The piece is going to need a lot. Let's see if we can find anything in here. So we got unexpected root vagrant. I haven't seen that recipe. Usually you see things like this in the uh, stuff like this in there. But vagrant recipe and incidents. That's something that I don't really see too much. As you can see, this user bit at saying that we could do something with it. I definitely followed this guy for it and couldn't really uh, figure it out. And the GTFO bids for it, couldn't really figure it out. So kind of let that be. 
We do have uh, something over here with a CVE. I might be able to do something with this guy. All right. Uh, while I was trying to also change privileges, things like that, I also tried to do the pseudo hack me a sandwich, and that did not work on this guy either. So he doesn't have make on here. We couldn't make the file or anything like that. Um, I don't know if I just dropped the pseudo hack me a sandwich, did that would work? I could try it. I mean, why not, right? So I like control C. Let's go ahead and do a CD back to my scripts to root everything. This is where I have sudo hack me a sandwich. I'll do a Python, a sudo Python attack M, simple HTTP server 80 in here. And I mean, I can always try again, but we're going to look at that weird stuff that we found in root. But I'm going to try to use that sudo hack me a sandwich, see if we can get anywhere. But we're going to use, first we're going to look at these guys over here before we do anything else. Because those guys are a little bit strange. If we scroll all the way up to the top, we actually see what sudo version are running, or what, uh, you know, different Ubuntu versions, things like that, that they're running. So we do have a VSFTPD process found, dub cred for memory's root. I did try this guy also, uh, dub the uh, credentials from the memory, I wasn't able to. I was thinking that would be a pretty cool way in. All right, so we're on sudo version 1.8.6, which is old. All right, so... Definitely do some of that. We got Ubuntu Linux version 4.0. Still looking for stuff. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Those were going to be watching that for a while. We're going to execute that command again in that web shell. Execute him again. We should be able to get a web shell pretty quickly out here. We and we do. Okay. So let me do a double W get. Now I'm going to try to just send over that, uh, I think it's sudo hack me a sandwich. wget from HTTP. Uh, I already forgot my IP address. And if that doesn't work, we're going to look at those different files and try to find some stuff. But might as well try something new. It's on port 80, so we're good with that. Don't need to put a port or anything behind it. And that's going to be slash um, sudo. It's not going to allow me to do anything, so. I never did my full shell, so let me go ahead and do that full shell first. Let me stop that. Okay, full shell. Let me just copy that like right down. Do my Python again. And we'll go ahead and uh, try to go into CD to slash temp. And we'll try to do another wget HTTP. Uh, 10, 9, 1, 241. Pseudo hack me a sandwich. Let's see if we can W get this. Then I can just run it. I don't know. Pseudo hack me a sandwich. Or, uh, change mode for that to executable. Alright, and let's try to just run this guy. Let's see what happens. You never know. Um,. I'll just try to run all of them, I guess. Zero. Nope, that one didn't work. Okay, let's try again. One. Nope, that didn't work. And it doesn't look like it's going to work. Two. Nope, that didn't work. Okay. So none of those actually worked. That's okay, though. I'll just see if I can just do that, make it real easy, but no. Yeah, if it did work, we would have got a root shell, so everyone knows. All right, but that's all right. So we did our libp scan, and we saw those files that we probably shouldn't have or are expected a root. So we have cd to slash, and now we are in the root directory, right? So we're in root directory and everything. And, okay, we can read recipe.txt. Let's go in cat recipe.txt. And someone asked where our main ingredients for our spice soup is today. I figured I can't keep it a secret forever. And told him it was love. So our secret ingredient is love. Okay. <laughs> That's not true, but, you know. And we can also get into incidents with this guy right here. So we can also get it there. So let's go ahead and CD into incidents. All right. Did I do that right? It's a directory, right? CD into incidents. 
Okay, there we go. So we got a sp suspicious PCAP. Okay. Well, that's good because what that tells me is that there is a Wireshark documented here. That's what PCAP file is. To be able to get that Wireshark document, we know that it has Python, so we can do a Python server over here. We do Python tag M, simple HTTP server, um, and we will put that on port 8000. Okay. So there we go. Now what I should be able to do is do a wget HTTP, their IP address for this box, which is 1010.214.89. There we go. Port 8000. And, oh, I did HP twice there. And we are going to get that, uh, that suspicious uh, PCAP file there. And we got it. So if I do an LS Tech LA, we can see that I have specific PCAP one because I already downloaded it once before. One second. So we can see that I already had that file once before. So I'm going to go ahead and remove um, the one, that one. Now I can use Wireshark, and I can open this file. Okay. There's also another thing I can do with this file, too. Because if I'm trying to follow through Wireshark, this may become a real pain. All right. This could become a pain pretty quickly, actually. So first I'm looking at... You know, I know it came from the suspicious, suspicious stuff. Here's an HTTP file right here. It is suspicious. If you actually read through this Wireshark file, you'll see that somebody else uh, also tried to make a reverse shell out here. And things like that had a close connection and stuff. See, here we go. Get files, FTP, shell.php. So somebody else has already done this. All right. Uh, for the IP address, like right there, obviously this is all fake. But if they already did it, they may have put the passwords and stuff in there. So we could try to, so let me go back to my desktop, try hack me, start up. We could try to see what they wrote. Or they may have captured something in that Wireshark document that we want to see. So we do a strings. All right, we get strings, suspicious, PCAP file. This just makes it a little bit easier to run, or a little bit easier to read for you instead of click through everything else. And to try to find really a password in here. That's really what we're looking for. So... Password for WW data can't get enough spice. That looks like a password to be like right there. We got like right here, and it says sorry, try again. So we know that that's not WW data's password, but he is trying to CD into Lenny. So is that Lenny's password? So we could take that password. Uh, let's go ahead and stop this web server over here. Um, do my listener again? Get back in through my shell. Stop him, execute. All right, we'll get back into my shell. And we're going to do an SU to Lenny. We're going to try to change it to Lenny. We'll put that password in. And sure enough, now we're Lenny. Cool. So let's CD back to home, Lenny, because he had a file in here, right? And he's got document scripts and user.txt, cat user.txt. And from right here, usually I like to also do is a sudo tech L. And we know his password. And it says that he may not run sudo on startup. Okay, let's go to scripts. Let's see what he has for scripts. And we have planner.sh and startuplist.txt. Let's go ahead and cat that planner.sh. And we see we have some type of bash file here. Echo list from home money script startuplist.txt. And put that to etsyprint.sh. What's in, let's cat startup list dot text. Nothing's in there. All right, so now we have to start wondering, can we put something in there? Like, can we put another reverse shell there again? And when we run that other reverse shell, can we then, uh, like, do something with that? You know, so... It said that I went to Etsy, Etsy print.sh, right? So let's see if we can get there. So let's cat slash Etsy 
slash print dot sh. See if we can get there. If that's a thing. We can. Okay. So it says echo and done. Echo done. That's all it's saying. Okay. So let's go ahead and cd into Etsy. And let's go ahead and uh, can we? What, what I'm thinking now is maybe we could put a Python reverse shell again. Say that thing we already did. So we can go to our CD scripts. And we're going to do a cat our rep python1.txt. And what if we could change this port? So we're already using port 4242 over here, right? So can we change it to like port 8000 or like, you know, 4444 and create a totally another shell? Can we do an NC attack LVIP 4444, right? And we're going to go ahead and plug this in. So we're going to echo. But I don't want to echo that whole thing. That's not going to work. Okay. That's not going to work. All right. I'm going to have to actually change it in that file because I have to change my password or my um, IP address there, don't I? So we'll get back into him. We're going to ask you back into Lenny. And bad news, I forgot the... Yeah, okay, it's up here. I forgot the password. That's why I usually take notes. Okay. Uh, we're going to CD back into home. Lenny, CD back into script, or actually we're going to CD to Etsy, excuse me, and we're actually going to get that a print cat print.sh, right? So what we want to do is we want to try to send that file that we have at that print.sh, because that's where he's employed everything from, right? So let's try to use that Python again, that uh, Python reverse shell that we had. So let me go ahead and... Uh, just totally change that up to nano uh, rev1.txt, and we're going to change this. Okay, it is not 241. I'm just an asshole. Okay. Oh, sorry. I got to change the port, huh? Port 4444. Yes. Enter. So we're going to echo. Um, cat. Him. Into... Um, what was it? Print. Dot sh, right? Uh, hopefully, go to cat print. Dot sh. We don't see too much weird stuff in here, and that did not work. Okay, that's okay. So we gotta try to get him in there somehow. We're gonna have to do something to be able to get that guy in there. Huh. Wonder if I don't need that. Uh. A what if I don't need those quotation marks around it? Echo. She just keeps. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I'm an asshole. We already got it. So the first one that I did worked just fine. All right. So we echoed it. And we put it in there. I already have my listener up and running, and it worked just fine. So now we can do a Who am I? We should. Okay. Now we're we're Letty. All right. We should be able to change ourselves over to root. I already am Letty. I don't care about that. Like really at all to be Letty. <clears throat> I think I just actually pretty much did the same thing I did before. With this, I just made him. So we're going to execute that again. So we'll execute back into Letty. And I already forgot his damn thing again. Something about spice. Can't get enough spice. All right. CD back into that uh, temp file. I really don't want to write this whole thing out. <laughs> to echo that whole thing in there. So, I wonder if we could just do a wget. It just, it just get that rev. I wonder if we could do that. Let's do a wget. Let's do a python tech m simple http server. Alright, we'll put it on port 80 sudo Okay, and uh, I wonder if I could just W get uh, 10, 9, 10 9 .241. So I could change it in here, not to worry about it. 10, 9, 1, 241. Uh, that was rev underscore point out one dot text, right? Do that. And from here, we'll do a and see for 4444. Four, four, four. Cool. 
so he's in there now. So all we got to do is just echo him somehow. Echo rev point out one dot text into Etsy or slash Etsy print dot sh. Can I do that? I can't print. Can't do that. I was hoping it would like do something more than just that. That's all. All right. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna type out the whole thing over here. So we're just gonna do an echo. Um, actually, that's a like, nope. Somebody cat rev one Python text. We're gonna do an echo. We're gonna copy this guy in there. All right, and we'll say that he's going to um, go to uh, what is it? Slash Etsy print dot sh. Or if we could just do it like this, copy this whole thing. Can we do that? And we just did something. Who am I? Still Lenny. Ha! Huh. I was already Lenny. This guy does not want to become root now, does he? So I feel like I feel like that should bring me up to root, not Lenny again. You know, um, I wonder if Lenny has more permissions now. I mean, <laughs> ID. Nope, still I am Lenny. All right, that's not really what I wanted, like right there. Hmm, because Lenny can run that. I'm putting him in there. He's exporting the R host. He's doing all that. Create a listener on here. I see print.sh. If I go to CD in the home, Lenny. I do an LS Tech LA. CD in the scripts. Plus LA. Yeah, that's ran by root. Slider.sh is ran by root, so I should be able to do that by going to print.sh and changing it. Startup list dot text. Startup list dot text. But there's nothing in it. I wonder if I could just copy that maybe into startup list and if we'll put it into that other guy. I wonder if we could do something like that. That doesn't make any sense to me though. Hmm. I don't, I don't know um, if I can put him in like startup list or anything like that. I'm also wondering if I could do the bin bash reverse shell command. Some of that. Let's try bin bash reverse shell command. Let's try to do uh, bin bash rev shell command. Pay all things. Yep. Uh, bash TCP. Dev-I TCP. Should be something with bash, it's like tack i, maybe it's tack c, is that one, process for java, that was going to be something like that, bash tack c, then bash should be like slash bin bash, let's see here, I'm trying to remember the command for it, I wonder if I can also do something like that too, I, mean, I think that's what I already have, I already have a couple of those, am I doing the python tack c, because I'm not, did I echo python tack c with it? I did not. Okay. Echo. Python tax C. Now we'll put all this in there. And that still didn't work. Why did that still not work? I'm not understanding that one at all. Why that still 
not get anything from that. That's really, really strange, I feel like. Um, go ahead and re-execute that guy over there. That's okay. Learning is occurring. I probably should copy down that, that guy right there, huh? I feel like I did not do this much last time. Where the heck is... There we go. Stop. Four two four two. That guy is four two four two, right? This one over here. Yep, four two four two. Execute. Boom, boom. I see in the Lenny. Yeah, I feel like I didn't put this much work into it last time to get it in there like this. I feel like I just totally missed it. Yep. Okay. SLA. I forgot what we were even catting here. What am I trying to get to again? I don't remember what I'm even trying to get to now. Um, Print.sh. Is print.sh actually in here? Yeah, there's a guy. Cool. And Lenny can run that. Right, yep. Okay, so cat print.sh. That's what I get. That's it. I right, can run it. Am I missing something stupid here? Am I being an idiot here? Just missing something like that's really, really easy. I'm just not realizing it. Or what's going on here? I don't know, boss. I don't bloody no I could always try to use So I'll try to use the pen test monkey cheat sheet and try to find the echo bash C. Let's see here. Uh, pen test monkey cheat sheet. So we'll go to payload all things. It should be bash C. Bin bash. So go bash. That's bash deck L, bash deck I. It's bash C, isn't it? It's not like I just do like a bash C, bash tag I, and let's go from there. That's a WTCP, change that out, change that out. Zero one, that would be good. And then all we gotta do is just tell it to go into a certain file. That should be good. So I wonder if I can do something like that. Let's try to do a so it would be a let me go ahead and move this guy over here. So, oh, we got to delete all this. Also, worry if I was messing up the echo request in all honesty. <laughs> I might just be messing that up in all honesty. But I think I can do a, um, I believe it's a bash C, and then from there, put in all the information. So, I think I can do a echo bash tax C, like that. Put in that like little guy like right there, right, and then I should be able to do now oh, echo bash bash C right echo bash bash taxi. I think that that's correct. I think that's the way I have to do it, and I should be able to do my the rest of my command here. So I should be able to do bash tag I boom boom. I think if I remember properly, boom. Boom, boom, like that. I think that's, that's how it look. And I'll just have to change up just the IP address. And then I would definitely uh, save that to at the print.sh. And let's go ahead and change up this IP address, like right here. Change up that to my IP address, which is going to be that guy like right there. I always forget it. Okay, so we should. I wonder if we can run something like that. 
try control shift C him. And let's see if we can run something like this, like right here. And I'm also wondering, do I have like how I did the reverse shell here? No, I don't. Why would I? Right. What's plain dot text? Files whenever I change the Wireshark document. So I'm gonna try to run this whole thing, like right here. Let me see if we get anything on that. And so back to startup, or back to uh, I don't know where I'm going now. Back over to here. Let's try to run that. And that's obviously not going to work because the port like right now is 4444. So I change this because that didn't do anything for me. She's probably like, yeah, cool, dude. I don't know what you want me to do with that. All right. So if we cat print sh, we should see cat print dot sh. We should see my bash script in there, right? If it says echo bash bash, uh, can we actually do with that uh, print dot sh? Yeah, it's trying to execute bash twice. So I'm wondering if, let me try it one more time. Echo cat print dot sh. It's still trying to. Looks like it's saving over the file. Because to append a file, I would do the, the double greater than sign, right? Uh, let's try. I guess we could try to do a double greater than sign, but that shouldn't be it. Because I think that's just to append a file, like right there. Yeah, I have. Yeah, see, that's just to append a file. I don't want to append it, so I'm wondering uh, now if I should get rid of that first bash. Maybe it is bash tack I. Maybe it is something like that. Try that. Oh, I'm still trying to append it. And he did not like that at all, did he? Oh, I pressed Control C. That's why I'm about to say he didn't like that one at all. all right, that's okay. We'll get back into this guy and we'll try that again. So we'll stop him, execute him. Boom, boom. Uh, we'll cd into Lenny, or su into Lenny. You know what else? I think I also used, I used a Python script last time too, so I don't know why I'm having so many problems with it this time with the Python script, but things do change, so it's good to know more than one way, I guess. And now I can't find his password though, so that's kind of crappy. Where's your password go? Must be an idiot here. Just not seeing it, or what's going on here? Where's your password at? Where is your password? Get the string that guy again. Find his password. Oh, here we go. There we are. Three. Okay. And let's try to do that again. You know what, though? I am trying to do it in Etsy slash print, so I wonder if I should do it like that. Um, we're going to control shift C that, control shift V, because I was already in the Etsy file, right? So that probably wasn't helping out very much either. So let's cat Etsy print.sh. Okay, I keep appending the file now, so let's go ahead and delete some stuff out of here. And we'll delete that. Uh, let's try to copy that again, so then we get rid of all that crap. Okay, uh, cat Etsy print.sh. And we have a bash that guy, bash that C. And let's try to do a bash for print.sh. Do I have to actually run that or anything? Okay, let's try to do a, uh, let's try to get rid of this bash I over here. Oh, that is not spelled right. Yeah, it is bash, B A S H. Yeah, it's okay. Bash, bash, boom, 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 boom. Let's try control shift C, let's try control shift V him in there. We're still not getting anything over here, are we? Let me see the scripts. 
Uh, I messed it up. Oh, we got somewhere. All right, so it just took a bit for that script to run, and we were able to get it. So I got rid of the bash I, so I did do an echo bash C, and then this guy like right here, this command that we get off of pen test monkeys. All right, um, and we set that to etsy print.sh. Takes a minute to run. I was about to just run planner.sh, because if I can't planner.sh, he should have gone to print.sh, and he should have looked at that. So I was about to run planner.sh, who runs as root. Okay. So now we are now finally root. All right, cool. Um, like I said before, I'm pretty sure I did that with a Python script, and it worked just fine. Don't know why I was having so many problems this time. It may have just been how I was echoing it or whatever else. Uh, I may have been messing that up. But now we're here. So let's do an ls tech la, and I'm going to cat the root.txt, and I'm also going to go back and get the other stuff that I forgot to get. So we did actually get into it now. We go in cat root.txt, I'll submit that. And I'll go ahead and submit my user.txt, which was in CD home Lenny. I'll ask tech LA. And let me cat my user.txt. There it is. Cool. And yep, that's just the credits for the box. Cool. And we completed that. Alright, so it took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Should not have taken that long, but that's okay. So what we did was we went to an FTP server, saw the FTP server was up and running with our MF scan. Uh, we also saw that port 80 was up and running with our MF scan. From there, we were able to then do was we were able to um, go into, do a GoBuster on that port 80, realize that we can get to the FTP port. Once we realized that we get to that FTP port on a port 80, we were then able to put a file into there, which was a PHP web shell file, which allows us to execute commands uh, on a web. We then created a reverse shell using Python. I typed in which Python, show that it does have Python. We created a reverse shell using Python. We're able to get into the box as www.data. Um, we saw a PCAP file. Once we ran limpies, we saw some things out in strange places. We followed where those strange places were uh, within root and found a PCAP file. We used strings for that PCAP file, saw that somebody else had continued to try to use a password for www.data that did not work. So realized that's probably Lenny's password, used that for Lenny, and then that allows us to become Lenny. Uh, Lenny was then able to change a couple different files in there, such as print.sh. And from there we realized, okay, well, if we change print.sh, utilizing a reverse shell, we can then uh, create a reverse shell back to us. And since the planner.sh ran as root, which called back to print.sh, we should be root once we get in there. So we're able to do all that, and finally we became root. Bring this down like a little bit. That's weird, like wherever it's at. We were finally able to become root, which then allowed us to root the box and get our all of our flags. Um, hopefully you learned something. I know I definitely did, because I think last time I did this, I used a Python script to become root. Um, I'm probably going to keep messing with that, because I'm almost positive I did to become root. And uh, yeah, I'm going to mess with it for like a minute or two here. So if you're watching the video, it's pretty much done now. But if you want to see me mess with this, you're more than welcome. Cat. Rev. Python. Rev1. Python.txt. Oh, what am I going to do? Export our host. C, so I can do an echo. Let's do that like right there, right? That looks like the bin sh is already done. Let's that 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 let's try to do something with that. I might have to do like an echo Python attack C. C O S R Sour. Go back. Jesus Christ, dude, why? All right, let's see what we got here. Um, not cat to four 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 four. 
star listener up there. Am I going to this anywhere? I'm not going to send you this anymore. So let's do that to Etsy print sh. No shit, it's not going to work. I'm not sending it anywhere. All right, there's that. Let's try that. Syntax broken. I'm pretty sure I actually have to get rid of that guy right there. Says syntax is broken. Might be some syntax in here. I don't know. That's broken because that's all red. Red usually isn't really the best color. And I just exited out of the whole thing by accident. That's okay. Stop that. Execute. Uh, SU to Lenny. Um, oh, never mind. I actually got it. So, yeah, I could do it like that. Okay, cool. So, if you watch this point, you can use it. Um, I was just not sending it anywhere because I'm an asshole, pretty much, uh, from what I can see down here. So, I think I was just an asshole. So, yeah, because now I'm root up here, LSXLA, and, yeah, I mean, I got it again with the Python script this time. All right, so, yeah, you can use Python scripts or really any script that's going to call back to you. So, awesome. All right, cool. Um, yeah, if you don't believe me, I can do it. Who am I? cdn.ssh. We all we have is authorized keys. That's it. Nothing uh, cool in here. So whatever. All right, but yeah, awesome. So that all looks good. Uh, that's how I did with the Python script last time. I was really confused by that. So hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, see you all later.